hello july welcome back to my channel guys hello bunny oh no you're gonna say hello to everybody oh you're a good boy hello guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to a brand new video i thought i would pick up the camera and vlog today it is a brand new month as always we like to do a bit of a reset day type vlog at the start of every month just pottering around the house, doing bits and bobs, just a standard vlog really, and then I'll include some monthly favorites at the end of the video. So, um, what is on the agenda for today's video? Well, I went to a car boot sale this morning actually, so I'll include some footage of that in just a second. But then I'm also wanting to head out this morning, I'll leave the dog here because it's a bit too hot, but um, the dog. <laughs> Tom always laughs when I call him the dog. <laughs> he is the dog, the dog at the house. Barney. I'll leave Barney here. It's a bit too hot to be letting him or like walking around middle of the day. It's like 28, 29 degrees today. Anyway, um, I want to head out to, there's a shop in Didsbury called Moth, which is just my aesthetic. It's absolutely beautiful. If anyone's local to Didsbury, you'll know it's actually West Didsbury, um, but it's just gorgeous. And anyway, they posted online yesterday that they're having a street sale with like kind of imperfect, pre-loved, um, basically selling stock at a bargain. And I thought, well, I'm gonna get there as close to opening as I can, which is 11 a.m. So that's where I'm gonna head to next. And then just see where the day takes us, really. I do want to get a little bit of housey bits done, a bit of styling, potentially I keep like, not putting off styling the shelves and stuff, but just trying to find the time to do it. Honestly, guys, I just feel that busy and here, there and everywhere that I feel like I need a full week dedicated to just no work, just styling the shelves. But then I say no work, but I want to film it for you and I want to vlog it. So anyway, I'll probably just do little bits here and there. So if I get around to doing that today as well within the video. Oh, in fact, I did go to Matalan the other day and I've got a few like a couple of bags worth of stuff that I've not shown you yet I've been keeping it in the bag so maybe I'll show you that later as well but anyway let's head back to this morning where we went to a car boot sale maybe I never knew what I really wanted but looking back I can see it's all clear I'm still a kid trying to act like they all taught me but nothing makes sense anymore up on the island and I'll show you what I bought from the Sam I keep saying sample sale or thinking sample sale street sale that they had also timed it well West Didsbury Makers Market was on today as well so I popped over to there um I was gonna get Tom's not here today but I was gonna get us I'm gonna go over to Wilmslow and pick us up his favorite well our favorite Buzzy Bees Bakery but they had a stand at the Makers Market in Didsbury so that was handy got us some treats got Tom a brookie, as always, he loves the brookies, which is like a brownie wrapped in a cookie. He gets the kind of chocolate one. And then I thought I would try something new for myself today. I went for a caramac blondie. And then I also got a banana bread. They do like this lotus biscoff banana bread, which I'm gonna have today. I'm gonna save the 
blondie for tomorrow. And then what did I get in here? Oh yeah, this was from the maker's market. I need to put you down somewhere, one second. Okay, just popped you up on the island. So from the maker's market, I saw this little store. There were loads of stores there, lots of like good food and drink places and it was leaving. Um, but I saw this and I just thought it was so cute, especially for styling. It's just a little matches pot with the striker on the bottom. So yeah, Maker's Market by the name. It's full of stands which sell like little handmade ceramics, handmade jewelry. It's the Maker's Market, homemade baked goods. So yeah, it is a, like a little ceramic pot which they had loads of different colors. I nearly went for the black one, but I ended up going for the lighter colored one. I just thought maybe styled up on the shelf somewhere that could look really cute and also really handy to have. Um, so that was nine pounds. I thought that was a pretty good price for, for that. I saw another stall as I was walking around, which after I bought that, which had some, but I didn't quite like the shape of the pot quite as much. And I thought, well, let me just check the price comparison. And it was about 15 pounds, those ones. So yeah, I was pretty happy with nine pounds for that. Let me show you the bits I got from Moth, because they are my caves. Okay. So first things first, I did actually go into the shop as well and saw these, which I thought would be perfect for in our kitchen. So I've shown you recently, we've got these little espresso glasses from Selfridges, from Anina, Anna and Nina, I think it's called, um, for myself and Tom, which are good, but they are literally just an espresso and they are just like when you pour the espresso it literally covers the rim um which is fine but then sometimes we like a bit of a cortado where we just add just a little dash of milk or milk froth so i wanted a slightly bigger option that's not a full-blown mug and then i saw these so i got two different colors they had like three in total three different colors in total they had these two and then like a darker charcoal gray um but yeah these are the two that i went for full price eight pound fifty each but anyway yeah i got to the sample sale we stood in the queue um and a sample sale street sale whatever and then i saw that they had the charcoal color they had one of them in the imperfect street sale so listed at just £3.50 instead of the £8.50. So obviously they had loads of these in store at full price. But honestly, the fact that it's imperfect really doesn't bother me. So I actually got one of each colour in the end. Um, that's the imperfect bit if I show you. There's a tiny little mark there on the rim. But yeah, that's fine by me to save a fibre as well. More than happy to do that. Then I got this at the imperfect section at eight pounds this tray i don't know how much these were full price because they weren't in store anymore but there's a little tiny chip here but again because it's white it's not that noticeable and it's kind of got a texture to it anyway an irregularity that it doesn't make it that noticeable so i thought this on like a console or the dining table or the shelves or in the island, the bathroom, wherever. I feel like I'll definitely find a home for this. And I like the fact that it's kind of textured. So yeah, with a nice reed diffuser in the middle or a little trio of candles or something. And then what else did I get? I got, oh, I got this tray. This was like when I was in the queue to buy the items. I saw this and added it to my pile. And it's this tray at six pounds. Again, it's got a couple of chips from it. It's like a stone cement kind of texture. But again, it kind of adds to the irregularity and the distressed kind of texture of it anyway. So yeah, I thought this was a bargain at six pounds. So it's much bigger than the rectangular one. And I also find circular trays easier to use for styling purposes. Like I've got one on the island with candle reed diffuser and little salt and pepper pinch pots from the white company so yeah i feel like that will go somewhere and look lovely and then this was my favorite item this is the first item i grabbed it's the only one there and i honestly was surprised that no one else had grabbed it sooner and it's this gorgeous rustic 
what do they call it? Paper mache, paper mache pots. I say paper mache, but it's actually quite weighty. So it's got some substance to it. And as you can tell, this one is very distressed, very irregular. This is the, that massive chunk there is the imperfect element to this piece. Cause I nearly paid full price for these when I saw them in store last time I went in. And I was just umming and ahhing and I was thinking, where do I put it? And I was thinking, we've not finished the house yet. So maybe I should wait. Anyway, I'm glad I did because at 10 pounds, do you know what? I'm second questioning myself. Did I actually get it? And it's in the storage room somewhere. I don't think I did. I know I've got a couple of other wooden bowls from Inspirations Wholesalers, and I think that's what I'm confusing them with, that I've got like two of them and I like them stacked together. So I need to find a home for them as well. But this, I just think is beautiful. Oh, I just love it. Anything rustic, textured, oh, just love. Like all of these bits. Anyway, <sighs> very successful trip out. I'm absolutely sweltering. <laughs> I need to get this hair up off of my face, off of my neck. I might even get into a shorter dress because this one that I'm wearing is from Next, from last year, which I love. If I just move you over here, I'll show you. It is actually like a kind of midi length with pockets. And it is lovely, but it's actually quite a thick fabric. So um, yeah, I feel like I'm just gonna get into something. I need to sneeze. <sighs> Let me just get myself together. totally forgot to share with you i actually left them in the car that's probably why uh the bits that i got the car boot sale this morning so just before i head up and show you the matalan things i'll just show you this one here because i don't have to carry it then just got this crate with like this well, it needs a bit of a clean but i think somewhere in the basement i might do some kind of like wine cellar feature type thing at some point and i just thought any kind of like vintage crates like that might come in really handy so it says le chateau oh no chateau de le bosque saint estef wherever that is but yeah it's just like some kind of vintage wine style crate which i thought could look quite nice turn into a feature that was a pound this what i like about car boot sales is like most things are like a pound 50p um, so I only got a few bits, and to be honest with you, rarely do I get loads of car boot sale anyway. You do have to sift through a lot of, one man's trash is another man's treasure, let's just say that. However, there's a lot of the former rather than the latter. But anyway, I got that crate and then for 50, for 50p, I got this little seed box, which I thought would be quite handy to have seed packets in it's from the garden trading company love the garden trading company and i had a quick look they've not got any on sale for that particular design at the minute but they did have some similar but without seeds written on and they were 20 pounds so the fact that this was 50p bargain there was also another stand that had the exact same one but in the reverse colors so it had like a it was kind of like a black tin or it's like a charcoal tin with cream writing uh so i'm glad i saw that one first because i prefer that color anyway but yeah got that kind of to go with it actually on a different stall a guy had loads of these that he was selling and i think there were either three for five pounds or two pounds each and he wasn't budging on that price so it was two pounds for this grow your own zesty herb kit from plant theory and then in there you get this says like a little what's in the kit on the back a packet of basil sweet danny lemon seeds one packet of parsley seeds rosemary seeds fennel thyme you get three bamboo pots five plant markers a jute bag pencil tweezers 
vermiculite, I'm gonna learn all this, it's a journey, compost and instruction cards. So yeah, I thought that was quite good actually for two pounds, I can't really complain at that. Um, and then on another stall, just really randomly, a woman had these two little jute bags with traditional hand-baked biscuits on and I just thought they'd be quite cute. If ever we had like people over and I was doing some kind of baking or something and if ever I did biscuits, you could pop them in a little kind of like cellophane wrapper but then put them within these bags. Cute, right? Uh, they were 25p each and then for a pound or like 50p each, there were these vintage wooden pegs. Now, there's a vintage, it's called the Vintage Emporium that I've been to before, and I remember seeing vintage wooden pegs, just like this, like old battered wooden pegs for display purposes, well, I mean, for me, it's for display purposes only. And I think from memory, they were about 20 pounds for about this many. And I was like, oh, they do look good. They're like styled up. I'm thinking Neptune home style. They have like vintage washboards and little old pegs like this, just in a glass jar in a laundry room. And I thought I could put these in the utility room. I do have some in there anyway, but they're like, they're, they're new. I'll take you down there. Uh, that is everything that I got anyway. But yeah, I'll take you down and show you. Oops. But I do have some like wooden pegs like this style, but they're new. So anyway, the fact that they were a pound or a 50p a bundle, I just thought I struck gold there compared to what they sell at antiques places. That is the only thing with like antiques places. You get some really good stuff, but it's really like overpriced, I think anyway. So this is my jar of pegs that I just have propped up on this shelf that top one next to those woolen balls what are they called wool dryer balls so yeah they're just they're nice but they're all brand new so they don't have that kind of rustic vintage feel to them so i i might even mix some of these new ones in with uh with the old ones oh i only dropped it in the sink there so let's do this now prefer that that's like one of those very unnecessary little switch ups unless if I get a bigger jar maybe I could use maybe even the bigger jar for those and put those wall balls in here anyway for now I'm pretty happy with that makes it a little more rustic rarely come down here anymore now that we have the TV upstairs I just feel like it's something that I'm kind of, which I'm glad about, but I can kind of forget that washing is in here, just hung up drying. Um, and we would hang it outside, but we don't have anywhere to hang it. We need some kind of setup. We do have a few little, like a tiny little uh, peg line in the garden, but nothing big enough for bedding, unfortunately. Because I do love the smell of freshly, dried bedding from the garden. This new jumpsuit is one of my Matalan purchases, £28. 
it's shorter than I thought it was going to be. I just thought it'd be full length for some reason, but it's more of like a cropped culotte style jumpsuit. I love the colour of it. I think it's gorgeous and like the material. It's like a linen, linen-y texture. Anyway, I've come upstairs to share with you the Matalan bits. There is nothing quite like quenching your thirst with a ice cold lemonade. I've gone for a seven up just this afternoon just to hit of hydration. Oh, and that re refreshing zestiness. Anyway, let me go grab the Matalan bags. Oh, and I've also got these two things, which I figured I might as well share with you as well. Um, from HomeSense, TK Maxx, this little bargain. I feel like it's these smaller little knickknack things that I'm missing for my styling purposes for like shelves and stuff. So $2.99 this one is, absolute steal. And again, like that rustic texture, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So these are in the garden section. And then my whole crockery set, my new kind of set that I've got for my kitchen is this and it's from TMS. it's the made in portugal labels that they've got on it and it's basically like i keep referring to it as the neptune dupe because it's got this kind of like bobble edge detail anyway i saw the cake stand and i do have a wooden cake stand from i think it's from matalan actually speaking of matalan uh that i got a while ago but it's smaller than this and i thought for a nice bigger cake and then to have the wooden one next to it with like some biscuits or smaller bits on could look really nice. The only thing is, 14 99 the only thing is I still am yet to have a cake stand with a dome. So I wonder if I could buy a dome just to fit this. Maybe if I just take measurements of it and then as and when I'm out and about if I can see a glass cloche dome to go over the top, I'll buy it. Because I do think it would be quite handy to have that for... You know when it's just sat out on the island and flies, doors open, windows open, to have cakes covered. Let me just go for another swig. And then Matthew Allen, good old Matthew Allen coming through with a gorgeous new range of home storage bits. This one was the most expensive and it was kind of pricey. I do feel like Matalan are upping their prices. Anyway, this one was 17 pounds. It's a metal toolbox. Perfect solution to organize your DIY essentials. I thought this would be really handy to have in the storage room just for little bits, you know, like just smaller screwdrivers, batteries, all that kind of knickknack stuff that usually ends up in the miscellaneous drawer in a kitchen. To have it all within this box, I just think will be better. So anyway, yeah, and also obviously branding, love. It's part of this laundry, the Laundry Co, laundry company. And yeah, it's just plain and simple. There's no dividers or anything, so you can keep bigger tools in there if needed. I also got from that same range, this little hand towel. Cute, right? Um, just this whole branding and aesthetic, I just thought was really nice. The Laundry Co. Laundry Service Wash Dry Fold. I thought this would be handy to have in our utility room. It's seven pounds, and I quite like to have a hand towel thrown over the Belfast sink down there, just to have a really handy towel if you need it and um yeah that would go with this next one that i got so i've got some laundry capsules in a laundry tin at the minute which i just don't like it's all chipped it's not very nice and when i saw this one i much prefer it so i'm going to donate that other one and i say donate it it's all chipped and battered but someone might like that we'll go with the whole rustic thing that they might like um which i say that I like, but no, I prefer this one. This was 11 pounds. It's a metal laundry powder tin, includes scoop. You've got your little scoop that you can just hook on there or pop inside. Now I, at the minute, I'm gonna go through phases, but at the minute I'm using laundry pods instead of powder. So powder in here, also if you just wanna pop the scoop in, that's what I do with my other one at the minute. I'm just throw uh, a load of laundry tabs in there. So yeah, I'm gonna pop that down in the laundry room. So that is everything that I just want to show you. Not a massive haul, was it? It's just a couple of little bits that I wanted to mention. I think that was everything, yeah. Finally, it's time. I'm gonna get my hair up off my face, get into a little dress and maybe sit and read outside in the, in the sunshine or possibly more likely in the shade. guys 
Things have just been sat outside enjoying some lovely sunshine, so I'm not complaining, whilst reading my book. And I thought I've given it a good chance and therefore I want to include it within my monthly favourites for this video. So it's the Colleen Hoover It Ends With Us, which everyone and their mum has talked about. And I've had this book for the longest time and just not got around to reading it because I've been reading other things. I'm a slow reader. I, if I'm honest with you, I'm more of a holiday reader. But something that I spoke to my therapist about and um, like did values work. We were spending a couple of weeks doing some work around values and what's important to me, what I want to do more, what I uh, would like to incorporate more into my life and in terms of the kind of self-love self-appreciation That kind of side to things I did say Reading brings me comfort and I would like to do it more often So I spent a few hours reading this book This for me is unheard of to get that far within a book in like a day Oh, I mean, it's not like I'm reading all day though if I was reading all day, I'd get through it. But to just pick it up here and there for a, a, like 20 minutes there, then go and make a coffee, watch some TV, then go and read it for another 20 minutes, that kind of thing. So to get almost halfway through a book in a day for me is quite good. So um, yeah, can't put it down. I feel like I've only just started. I feel like we're just getting going with it. And it's a really kind of touching book. It's not what I imagined it would be. I don't know why. I'm imagining like a romance which it is kind of a romance, but it touches on domestic violence. And yeah, I'm really enjoying that so far. I've got the prequel already. Is it prequel or sequel? The next book that follows it's called It Starts With Us, even though you start with It Ends With Us. That's the first book to read. Anyway, if you haven't read it yet, I would recommend you do so. I wanted to mention this as well within my monthly favorite. So I've got an accumulation of things here to show you, but this because i'm gonna go put it away so it's not precariously balancing on this sofa that i'm sat on so this you may recognize in my previous vlog i went charity shopping and got so lucky struck gold with a massive brand new zara home delivery to oxfam that was just loads of brand new stuff for um really good prices so this was one of them the fresh cut grass reed diffuser and I did actually mention in that video how my previous Zara reed diffuser that I've had was, it was actually part of this same range. It was the coffee break, coffee, something like that it was called, it was really, really strong. This is too, this is, I've been leaving this out by that little pot there of basil. And every single time I walk through the kitchen, I can smell this, even like not even near it like even if i walk this side i can smell it so yeah really really rate zara home fragrances so try their reed diffusers if you haven't already if you if you like me and someone can be a bit skeptical of reed diffusers and their strength this one's incredible and i suppose that one was from a charity shop as well so i know it was a brand new donation from zara but who knows how long it had been in zara home for okay Sticking with a fragrance, again in a vlog not too long ago, I showed a little outing that myself and Lydia went to at the travel centre to Maison Francis Kurjian Paris, their little stand that they've now got at the travel centre. And this fragrance that they very kindly gifted us, I have been wearing every single day, and it is just my favourite scent for summer. It's, it, oh, it smells expensive. It is expensive, I'm not gonna lie. It is pricey, but I do find with pricier scents, they tend to stay a lot longer. Like I've been on a dog walk in the morning and people have said to me, who smells good? Who is that? <laughs> smells amazing, it's me. Smells so, so good. This one is so light and so perfect for summer. Aquamedia it's called, it's one of their latest. They did engrave the bottle for us kindly as well with Freya. And I think Aquamedia, the whole principle around this perfume was that um, it is the exact colour of the middle of a rainbow. Anyway, another book that I wanted to mention, as well as my new one that I've been reading, is this one from Stuart Sandman. I got this in a PR package actually, and it's called Breathe In, Breathe Out. I come and go to this book. It's one that you can just pick up and go to any time. 
particularly maybe any time that you're feeling a bit stressed, a bit worked up, feel like you want to just work on yourself and do a bit of a meditation, a bit of reading. This book is really good because it teaches you practices through his experience of how breath work really transformed his life, his mindset, and how powerful breathwork really can be. So yeah, I'm into, I'm only three chapters in. Mind you, how many chapters are there? It was 10 chapters. Um, but yeah, been loving that so far. It's just a very easy read. Pick and choose as and when you want to go back to it. And yeah, been loving that. So anyway, got a couple of foodie bits now. For, oh, I'll show you this, it's a bit gross, but completely empty jar of this hazelnut cream spread from M&S. This is divine. I had it for the first time the other night on a crumpet. Don't knock it till you try it. Love a crumpet with butter. That's like my go-to breakfast usually. And I was craving something sweet. We didn't really have anything in. And I thought, well, we've got a crumpet and we've not got Nutella, but we've got this hazelnut cream. Divine. It's like the middle of, um, Kinder Bueno. Really good in baking. If you wanted to bake your own sort of brookies, brownies, cookies, to put, I actually think they do that at Buzzy Bee's Bakery in some of their, in their Kinder White one, which is one that I tend to go to, um, I'm pretty sure they do a scoop of that in the middle and it's delicious. Anyway, I've got a couple of other sweet treats that are, have been perfect for the warmer weather from Little Moon, it's got some new flavors. This one has been a favorite, iced latte coffee flavor. Um, but I've also tried this one and loved it, honey roasted pistachio. And then these ones are super refreshing and so lovely in the heat. And they're more, well that one actually says refresh us, whether or not it's a different range. It's more like a sorbet, I think, that's probably why. But it's called Very Berry. And these are just little, if you've never tried them before, they're little desserts. Ice cream wrapped in soft rice dough. So you take it out of the freezer for, they say take it out for five minutes. Well, I tend to not wait that long, I'm just straight in. But uh, it's only 70 calories per mochi, mochi. Yeah, this one is also delicious. This is the Summer Raspberry Ripe and Refreshing. So I thought I would mention those couple of new flavors that they've got. I'm not sure the coffee one's new or the pistachio, but it's new to me, I've never tried it before. A beauty product that I wanted to mention. Speaking of beauty, that kind of category, July for me is the month that I start my Invisalign journey. And I feel like a few people that I've spoken to that I've told I'm getting Invisalign are like, well, you don't need Invisalign. But I, I essentially had braces when I was younger, train tracks when I was about 15, something like that. And the retainers that you get afterwards, the one set of retainers, which are never gonna last forever, are they? Let's face it, for the last maybe, I'm gonna say 10 to 15 years, I've not worn them. So my teeth have shifted slightly back to, not all the way to how they were, definitely not all the way, but they have shifted and they're only gonna keep shifting as I get older. So I said to myself, I either want to stop it now, get um, retainers to sleep in at night, which were 500 pounds with Invisalign, or just go with the treatment itself, get them back to how I used to have them and then have retainers. So I decided to just bite the bullet and go for it, because what I don't want to do is get the retainers and then a few years down the line think, actually, I'm still not happy with my teeth, I still want them moving, because I've never been fully happy with my teeth. Uh, it's mainly these bottom ones that have shifted and these front four have kind of like gone up and back these ones have kind of protruded and then this one has slightly twisted back to where it used to be as well so hopefully fingers crossed they've said it's probably only going to be three to five months worth of invisalign trays but i take that with a pinch of salt i remember when i got train tracks it was like yeah it'll only be a year and it was like a year and a half so they always say add on a couple of months just to be safe so i'm hoping that if i start them this month which is towards the end of the month my appointment is then i will hopefully have them off before christmas but either way however long the process is it will be uh, yeah, a journey that if you want me to document, I can. But yeah, so I'm starting Invisalign this month. Let me know if any of you have had it and what you thought. No horror stories, please. Only good, positive ones. Thank you. I also wanted to mention some new hair products that I've been using. Again, this 
was a PR package, um, so that's kind of how I've fallen into trying it. But I do like John Frieda products anyway, but they sent me this range of the Pro Filler for fine hair. So from the outset, you wouldn't think that I would go for maybe like a fine hair treatment or a specific product. However, I do thin quite a lot around my hairline and also like have a lot of breakage here underneath. So for fine hair for me, I have like a lot of hair, uh, but this area is very fine. So anyway, I've been really enjoying it. it. Smells lovely. It really froths and foams up, which has been great. And then this one I've started to use as well. This is the actual thickening spray that comes with it. What I like about this is it is also a heat protector. So it's kind of like an all-in-one product for helping thickening your hair, but also helping protect it from heat. It's got biotin hyaluronic acid, silicone free. Spray through towel dried hair, making sure to fully cover under sections and root area. Comb to distribute evenly from root to tip for maximum fullness. Style hair using a blow dryer until completely dry. So yeah, they also sent with it a tangle teaser and I do already have one of these, but this also I thought I would mention within a monthly favorites because I use it every single time I do my hair, wash my hair. When your hair's wet, it's more vulnerable to breakage and damage. So if you're like tugging at it with a, like a, a normal hairbrush that's not suitable for, for brushing while it's wet, then it can damage your hair further. So this is good for the, I think it's called the wet, I have worked with Tangle Teaser before, I think it's called the wet detangler brush, Tangle Teaser brush, I'm not quite sure, but essentially you use it on wet hair, so when you get out of your shower, just to detangle before drying it, and it's really, really good. And then last but not least, ending on a random one, but I have mentioned that Fairy brought out some new scents, and this one I've been loving, Bergamot and Ginger, and you can see I've used not that much, but a little goes a long way with Fairy anyway. And yeah, I, I've got my nice one, my Dale So Farm one on display, but I tend to just grab this one from under the sink to use as and when I need to. Although I have to admit, I guess another favorite is having a dishwasher. It's been so long since we've not had it. Well, we haven't really ever. We had a dishwasher in the previous house. When we had the kitchen down here, the dishwasher broke, so that we didn't have for very long. We did have it for a bit, but we tended to just wash pots and then we were without the kitchen sink waste for a while so uh, anyway long story short having a dishwasher has been so lovely so much so that i haven't really used that much of this but as and when i have yeah i've just been grabbing it from under the sink and kind of saving my dales for farm one because that one smells so good um i tend to use that one more for if i need a bit of washing up liquid with some warm water to like wipe down the surfaces and things and rinse out the sink i've been using that one because it makes the whole room smell lovely uh, but yeah, just on a day-to-day -day quick rinse for something, I just tend to use this one. And it smells fab too. I did jot down a couple of TV favourites actually that I had and wanted to mention. So I just started watching the new uh, Sex and the City and Just Like That 2, season 2 that they brought out. And it is, it is, it's an easy watch. I never really watched the original Sex and the City. So I've watched the movies. Um, and I feel like it makes me want to go back and watch them all from the start. I wonder where I could get them from, like where they are online. If anyone knows, we've got Disney+, Plus, Amazon, Netflix, Now TV. So yeah, I might try and watch those from the start. Um, and then also Love Island, Guilty Pleasure. It's getting good, it's getting juicy and I do enjoy Love Island, I'm not gonna lie. Black Mirror new season has been amazing. I love the Black Mirror episodes. There was only one that I didn't like and of all the seasons of Black Mirror, it's probably my least favorite of all of them. It was actually the last one, if you've seen it. It was to do with like the the devil. Devil came back and there was a sales assistant worker that she had to like kill three people or else the world would blow up. It was just, it, it felt a little bit like, a bit silly. I don't know, I, di I didn't like that episode. Apart from that, every other episode I loved. My favorite is still probably, or one of my favorites, was one of the original seasons and actually one of the first episodes that got me into Black Mirror, which was the, is it called The White Bear? Or Bear Hunt or something? If you search back, if you've never watched Black Mirror and you like a thriller, it's really good because it's on Netflix by the way and it's like a season that you can pick and choose your episodes, you can read the blurb and pick and choose whichever one you wanna watch. You don't have to watch them chronologically. 
But yeah, something bare. Watch that one, it's really good. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, I noted this down. Look, watch this. Hey Siri, Lumos. I feel like Harry Potter fans will appreciate that one. I learned that on TikTok and I thought I'm gonna have to share it with you. Uh, and then one other thing was an Instagram account at the.brainhealth.doctor for some good, let me turn my torch off. Building a better brain one habit at a time, beginner's guide to neuroplasty. So basically she just has quite a few different posts that I've really been enjoying. Just simple little things, but it's all about like the study of the brain, how it works, ways to help manage stress, why novelty is important for your brain. I've read a lot about that, about like novelty and awe, how that can be really healthy for your brain to experience more awe. I was listening to a podcast with Stephen Bartlett about that. Happiness chemicals, get in your daily dose. These are all the different, different chemicals good for um, a healthy brain. Anyway, would recommend giving her page a read if you like that kind of thing so yeah i'm gonna end today's vlog here i'm sure some of you have got some summer holidays booked this month it is schools are off from july we've got a couple of months to go before autumn starts <laughs> and and then yeah watch this someone sent me a message on instagram today that said yeah it's only six months until or less than six months until christmas but it's actually only three months until we need to start prepping and buying presents and wrapping them I mean, who's to say you have to start three months before Christmas? You could start now. Anyway, enough Christmas talk. We were in July. Have a good one, guys. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I hope to see you all very, very soon in my next video. Bye, guys.